The ocean is a mysterious place. Though we know all sorts of incredible creatures that inhabit our planet's waters, there are many more we still have not discovered, and tales of strange sea monsters only add to its sense of secrecy. One particularly intriguing claim of an as yet unknown marine animal that's persisted for nearly 300 years is that of Stella's sea ape. Georg Wilhelm Steller was a German naturalist born in 1709 who was instrumental in documenting and describing the natural history of Alaska and the Bering Sea. He was a member of Captain Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition, a Russian mission to map new areas of the Siberian coast and parts of Alaska, as well as to discover new islands. Steller was aboard one of the two ships on the expedition, the St. Peter, and over the course of the journey he was responsible for describing all sorts of species new to science. These species are now named after this naturalist, and include creatures such as Stella's sea eagle, Stella's sea lion, and the recently extinct Stella's sea cow, which we've discussed in a previous video. Although these organisms that Stella documented have since been encountered by other people and are recognised as real, existing animals, one of the creatures Stella documented has remained a mystery, and to this day has still not been witnessed by anyone else. Stella's sea ape. The encounter with the sea ape took place on the 10th of August 1741, off the coast of the Shumajin Islands in Alaska. Stella reported how he observed the creature for two whole hours, and then proceeded to record a description of its appearance. It was about two Russian L's in length, he wrote, which is about six feet, and the head was like a dog's head, the ears pointed and erect, and on the upper and lower lips, on both sides whiskers hung down. He also recorded how the body was longish, round and fat, and the skin was covered thickly with hair, grey on the back, reddish white on the belly, but in the water it seemed to be all red and cow coloured. He additionally described it as having a shark-like tail. So what was this bizarre cryptid? Many explanations have been offered over the years, including the suggestion, put forward in Stella's biography, that it was a misidentified juvenile northern fur seal. This could possibly explain what Stella saw, since the forelimbs could have been hidden under the water, and the shark tail could potentially have been a confused reporting of the hind flippers. Other people have also proposed that Stella saw a sea otter, a leopard seal, a Hawaiian monk seal, or a fur seal that had been deformed in some way. However, none of these suggestions are quite satisfactory enough, since Stella was familiar with the animals that inhabited these areas, and had already described a number of them. Additionally, as I've already mentioned, he noted that he watched this creature for two whole hours, and apparently even attempted to shoot it, so he definitely got a pretty good look at it, and it just seems unlikely that an incredibly observant naturalist like Stella would be so unable to identify an animal he already knew, or that looked fairly related to ones he'd encountered before. An important part of this mystery is the relationship between Stella himself and the captain of his ship, Vitus Bering. Stella did not get off to a good start on the expedition, missing the original departure in 1738, and subsequently having to travel for the next two years overland to Okhotsk to meet the ship there. While Stella was on board the St. Peter serving as the scientist, he was only ever allowed by Bering to go ashore to explore and document once, for just ten hours when the ship had to resupply, a restriction that presumably frustrated Stella quite a bit. During this time on land he made many of his famous animal descriptions, but things were about to get pretty bad afterwards. The ship had already been separated from the other vessel on the expedition during a storm, and most of the crew, including Bering, were suffering from scurvy. Stella was not affected by this, and he tried to treat the crew with leaves and berries he had collected from his trip to the land, but the officers apparently would not let him. It was about a month and a half after his time off the ship that Stella recorded his observation of the sea ape, and then another three months later that the St. Peter became wrecked on an island during a storm. Bering died on this island of scurvy on the 8th of December, and the remaining crew were forced to stay on the island for eight months in total, with around 28 of them dying while they were there. It was on this island, now known as Bering Island, that Stella's sea cow was observed and hunted down by the crew. Eventually, the survivors were able to put together a small vessel from the remains of the St. Peter, and made it back to mainland. After this, Stella stayed and continued to document the Kamchatka Peninsula for two more years, before he was recalled to St. Petersburg. Along his return journey, Stella developed a fever, and he died in November of 1746. And what does all this have to do with the sea ape? Well, since it seems unlikely that a naturalist as careful and observant as Stella would so badly misidentify an animal like this, 
It's very possible that the sea ape was actually never an aquatic mammal, but rather one he shared the ship with. The description of the ape's face, with its long whiskers that hung down, seemed to match the facial hair of a certain member of the ship's crew, and the description is suspiciously omitted from his official reports and the ship's logs, only existing in Stella's personal notes, which would eventually be published as a book called Journal of a Voyage with Bering. But possibly the best evidence for what the sea ape really was can be found in Stella's name for the organism. Though it's often said to have been called Simnia marina, the full name that Stella gave it was Simnia marina danica, the Danish sea ape. And who was the only Dane on board the St. Peter? Captain Vitus Bering, a man that Stella seems to have had a great contempt for. It's very probable that Stella, in his frustration at only being allowed on land once, and at having to face such terrible conditions in the freezing arctic waters, decided to describe the man he blamed most for his situation as an unflattering sea creature that he even tried to shoot a couple of times. The report of the sea ape in his notes was published after Stella's death, and it seems his unexpected passing meant he couldn't remove the description from the publication, or explain that it had been a joke. To me at least, this explanation seems the most satisfying, and honestly really quite funny. It shows that these early naturalists and explorers had a great sense of humour, even if it was targeted at a man who would ultimately die an unfortunate death stranded on a remote island. Naming humour is still a part of science today, as you can clearly see in dinosaur titles such as Irritator, Kaiju Titan, and of course, Thanos, and it evidently has a long history. But what do you think is the best explanation for Stellar Sea Ape? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.